This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Honey. Ah, it's that time of year again when the days get shorter, the weather starts getting chilly, and everyone returns to their battle stations to fight the annual War on Christmas. Mm -hmm. And this year, the anti-Christmas crusaders have hatched their most cunning plot of all, COVID-19. The long game. Yeah. Wow. That's right, folks. The coronavirus was all just a ploy to take down Christmas once and for all, and it just might work. Across the country and the world, people are being strongly urged by governments and health officials to avoid gathering with friends and family to celebrate Christmas. And that's on top of the current anti-Thanksgiving messaging happening here in the U.S. specifically. So it's, it's a war on the holidays. <laughs> if only the Grinch had spread around a deadly virus in Whoville, yes. his plans could have been complete. Yes. And yeah, it, it really goes without saying at this point, nearly nine months into a global pandemic, that having a large indoor gathering is a terrible idea. Now, whether it's bars, restaurants, birthday parties, or even Thanksgiving and Christmas parties, in general, getting a bunch of people in a room, not good. Mm -hmm. Because one of those people might have it, and then everybody's got it. But what if they don't? Well, then... Uh, are you a gambler? <laughs> Are you a gambling man? Let it ride. There's no point at uh, even debating this anymore. You all know how it spreads, mm -hmm. and uh, you've seen what's happened in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it today. I fucking called it. We call things all the time. Yeah. But I fucking called it, and I said a month ago, I said, Trump getting it and getting over it that fast is going to destroy this place. Yeah, it seems, uh, I don't know if there's much correlation there, but there's got to be at least a little bit. I'm telling you, anyone who is like teetering on the edge looked at that fat, unhealthy fuck survive it and said, what am I doing? If he can live through it, well, I guess I can. What am I leaving my groceries in the garage for three days for? Like an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> I don't think anyone was really doing that anymore. Uh, that was that was a, that was a month one sort of thing. <laughs> sure. When everyone Look, thought it was just like on every surface. But with the virus, you either believe in basic science or you don't. And you're going to act accordingly. And, and a lot of people are going to celebrate the winter holidays as if it were yet any other year, despite the COVID infection rate being the worst it's ever been. There's it's like 25% of the entire infections have happened in the past month. Yeah, it sounds pretty bad. Yeah. But can't let that get in the way of Christmas. If, it's if we cancel stuff. Christmas, the virus wins. I mean, the virus is going to win if we don't cancel Christmas. The virus is going to win regardless. So you why might, not just have Christmas? Yeah, you might as well have a fun... Don't listen to us. Yeah. That's a joke. I'm just joking out loud. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you want to know something that's even more foolish than cramming dozens of relatives from far and wide into one living room? That would be visiting every single home in the Western world in one single night. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but entering each of those homes through the chimney, which is, of course, full of soot, which will surely cause you to cough a bunch once you've made it inside. And even worse than that, doing all this while being transported by livestock, which are, of course, vectors of infectious diseases. Yeah. If you don't have COVID, visiting tens of millions of homes in one night, that's a great way to get it. And if you already have COVID, well, the whole thing is... Kind of starting to sound like an act of genocide to me. Yeah, Santa, what the hell? What the hell, Santa? If there were uh, ever a year for Santa Claus to just sit this one out, it's definitely 2020. If not for the children's sake, at least for his own. The man clearly has several comorbidities that could really affect his COVID survival chances. He's overweight, he's extremely old, and based on all the cookies and milk he consumes, we're going to guess he's got a little bit of the sugar foot as well. Diabetes. Diabetes. Having said that... Trump survived it, and yeah. it, the only thing that can be worse than Trump surviving COVID is Santa Claus surviving COVID, because then the whole world's going to give up. Yeah. Hey, if Santa Claus can survive it on his schedule? Yeah. It's grueling. Yeah. You'd think he'd have some fatigue. Yeah. Uh, now, Santa, no offense, but look, this is not the year for your usual antics. We're sure that children will understand. Yeah. This Christmas, just stay home, and you're safe. You're up there in the North Pole. You got a bubble. You yeah. and Mrs. Claus and all your little elf slaves yeah. and your reindeer. You guys, you, you're you living the exact same you've been all year. Mm -hmm. Why not do it a little bit longer? Yeah. No problem. Except, wait, hold on. Breaking news. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the United States of America's leading epidemiologist. And the worst pitcher on earth. <laughs> you're not going to let him go with that <laughs> pitching, but it's true. Anyway, Fauci has weighed in on the Santa Claus issue. And it turns out, quote... Santa is exempt from this because Santa, of all the good qualities, has a lot of good innate immunity. Santa is not going to be spreading any infections to anybody. Wow. So, okay, that's good news. Uh, for Santa, at least. Um, anyway, reaction across social media has been pretty mixed. 
Some thought that it was nice that Fauci went out of his way to give little kids a little holiday uh, positivity. Mm -hmm. Um, Some suggested that perhaps we should capture this Santa Claus and drain his superhuman blood from his body for the good of science and uh, maybe end this pandemic once and for all. It's like Nightmare Before Christmas, except Halloween Town is just the the virus-loaded United States of America. Totally immune, you say? (laughs) Totally immune? Uh, Where would I find this Santa Claus? Yeah. Um, But uh, Pixelated Boat, the creator of the Milkshake Duck, and just a great poster all around, uh, they had perhaps the most scandalous take on all this. Wait a minute. That means he already had the virus, and he traveled all over the world last December. Folks, I think we found patient zero. And I mean, as we all know, Santa does get a lot of his toys and gifts from wet markets in China. Yeah, he does. (laughs) He does. And just in general, like the toys that he's delivering to children in the United States and Europe, he's picking them up from From China China, where they are made. From China. Yeah. Now, there's uh, two things I got to point out, though. Santa, uh, uh, Fauci saying that Santa is immune. I think it could be a bad idea because it's the same thing with Trump being immune. They're both, uh, you know, fictional characters that only exist in our mind. <laughs> yeah. But them surviving it or being immune to it gives people the hope that maybe they're immune as well. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, this to me and having fun like this in general when you're a serious person like Fauci, it's a character trait that has really been uh, eh, 50-50, especially in recent times where you have like Fauci being like, and, and by the way, for the kids, don't worry about Santa. Don't worry, Santa's fun. fun. And then on the other hand, of, like on the other side of things, you have uh, people and personality tr- uh, 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 personality traits like Trump, where he is on the phone with children yeah. saying, oh, you still believe in Santa Claus? You <laughs> yeah. loser. You fucking loser. So I love that Anthony Fauci can have fun with it, and I love people like that. Yeah. And it looks worse for sociopaths like Trump. It's but also... On the uh, other hand... People are going to be like, well, well if, if Fauci's joking around about this, we can all uh, lax up a little bit, right? Yeah. It's also a fun little throwback to like a month ago when uh, the uh, Santa Claus uh, union of mall Santas were uh, is, yeah. deep in negotiations with the Trump administration to be first in line for a vaccine. I wouldn't doubt Didn't it if the uh, Santa Guild used this as a point of reference for getting back into malls. No, come sit in Santa's. <laughs> I don't know what malls are actually doing. I'm sure there's some states in the middle of the country that are just totally letting kids and Santas breathe all over each other. But I did read like some of them are using like glass. So it's like you're visiting Santa in prison or something. Why don't you pantomime <laughs> what you want for Christmas? Yeah. Pick up the phone. Uh-oh, our time's running out. Just get an animatronic Santa. No, that would freak kids out, I think. Yeah, whatever. But also just seeing mall Santas, it freaks kids out. Like, it's such a weird, weird thing. Because, like, like 20% of, especially really small, like, toddlers, yeah. you put them in Santa's lap. They just start screaming. Yeah, they don't know. You can't even, you try, all you're trying to do is get a picture of it. And you can't even get a good picture because it's just this kid... Being placed in this strange, weird old man's lap, not understanding any of the uh, yeah. cultural context around it. I feel like it could be a great learning moment for children. It's like, look, even Santa's taking it responsibly. You can't go see him because he's staying in the North Pole. He's yeah. socially dissonant. That's the thing. It's like, oh, well, if Santa's doing it and I want to be good so that Santa brings me gifts, I should also be good and do the social distancing. And stuff yeah, like that's that. one way of looking at it. But I feel like. Uh, more, 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 most people are just going to be like, well, uh, you know, I don't want my kids to know that anything's wrong. So let's just pretend yeah. that everything's normal, even though this kid's only been alive for like four years. So who cares? There's a percentage of people who obviously live vicariously through their ch- kids and like yeah. they think it's a slight against them that their child can't see Santa Claus. Hey, kid, I got us a PS5. I mean, got you a PS5. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Hey, let me let me show you how it works uh, for a couple hours. Uh, anyway, speaking of Christmas, it's uh, looking like you might want to add toilet paper to your list and uh, hope that you've been a good boy or girl this year because, yeah, it's happening again. Who yeah. We love reboots so much, we do we do one in the same year, mm-hmm. within the same year. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you'll recall, back in March, before the virus even got uh, a foothold outside of China, shoppers in Australia inexplicably started hoarding toilet paper, and a few weeks later, the same thing started happening here in the U.S. Stores had to start rationing their toilet paper sales, fights broke out in toilet paper aisles across the country, and for about two months, acquiring TP for your bunghole was bizarrely difficult. Yeah, and that shit's back, folks. I was at Costco last week, and, uh, you know, it's so weird. Like, Costco is where I buy my TP, and because of the, you know, bulk size. With the big roll? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I buy toilet paper maybe four times a year. So it was like, yeah. I remember distinctly in, like, March through May, 
Just no toilet paper. Every time I go in, it's like, hey, you got TP? And they're like, oh, man, you got to get here pretty early I'll for wash toilet paper. myself with a rag on a stick. Um, but yeah, the most recent time I went, it was again, like, I got one of the last uh, packages of it. Did you fight people? No, it was pretty It was pretty orderly, but I was, I was like, hmm, this hasn't happened for a while. It's My target has TP, no paper towels. Mm. You can't, there, there's like three aisles of paper towels, all empty. I don't yeah, know what people are doing. Yeah, wet wipes and stuff like that are selling out too. Anyway, yeah, it's happening again. The logic behind it is just as incoherent now as it was last time. I mean, are people worried that the government is going to shut down supermarkets? Because it's pretty clear at this point that is not at all something that's going well, to happen. I don't know. Biden's in, he's going to be in and maybe he'll do things different. No, they're they're not going to fucking shut. They, they'll shut I down know. every other type of business before they shut down supermarkets. It's literally the most essential business yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I'm talking. To, I'm talking to that guy. To you. Yeah. Anyway, so no reason to believe that's going to happen. Nor is there any reason to believe that the supply of toilet paper is under any sort of threat. Mm-hmm. There's just as much toilet paper to go around as there always has been. People aren't pooping any more than they were. It's just that now people are buying way more of it than they actually need, which then causes other people to perceive that there actually is a story. So they go out and buy up as much as they can at the first opportunity they get and so on and so on and so on. And it creates this buying panic. And, uh, and, then, and then it's your turn to go buy toilet paper. And there isn't any fucking toilet paper. Is there a bidet shortage again? I don't think so. I'm going to go on. I checked Amazon. There, there's all I'm going to go on Tushy good. and buy all of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're mine now. You, you can walk come. around with a giant trench coat full of bidets. Just, just show like up the Costco. Freak. Who oh, needs a clean asshole? It's heavy. It's so heavy. I'm holding 20 bidets under the I'll, Let the me sleeve. show you how to clean your asshole without that disgusting toilet paper. You know, you can make your own bidet if you just pull the, the garden hose through your bathroom window. Yeah, that's and, how you uh, do in a lot of countries. Yeah. It's a hose. In, in the Philippines, it's uh, you just fill up a bucket. Yeah. Just pour it down. You're cracked. Anyways, the actual cause of this uh, second toilet paper gold rush seems to just be the fact that several cities and states recently introduced new pandemic restrictions that are all the kind of basic shit that we should have been doing the whole time. Yeah. Uh, Here in L.A., they just shut down uh, outdoor dining at restaurants. Uh, They limited the hours. I think they didn't shut it down entirely. No, today they they announced starting on Wednesday, I think, all outdoor dining is uh, going away. I never did it. So I'm not missing anything. Yeah, me neither. I still, tonight I drove past uh, the local, oh, they're all getting the it local now. sports bar and it was fucking packed. Uh, Especially now, you're like, we, now we all have to go before Wednesday. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know, maybe people were taking most of their shits at restaurants using their toilet paper. It's a, it's nice sometimes. Yeah. So who knows? Anyways, as we preached last time this toilet paper nonsense occurred, just get a bidet. You can get a basic bidet for like 35 bucks on Amazon. You can get a hand-powered one. You just squeeze it on your asshole. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you'll you'll be able to make a single roll of toilet paper last weeks. And no. you know what? Uh, dare I say it? If you're using a bidet, I haven't done it because I haven't had a toilet paper shortage yet. But you can get, you know, get a single color washcloth so you don't accidentally mix it in with the rest of the ones. Once your butthole's clean, you're just drying it off. Yeah, there's, so, uh, the people that are really hardcore into sustainability, That's they, they either use, like, their personal towel or they have, like, just a pile of... Rags. Towel, pile of rags. Oh, those are my shit rags. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like if you bidet properly, yeah. you ha- your ass is clean. You're just drying it off. Mm-hmm. It's fine. So there you go. It's like a, it's like, like a hand towel or anything else. It's just the idea that... Just don't mix the hand towels with the ass your... towels. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Keep yeah. them separated. So yeah, clean that ass. And uh, yeah, if you stay, uh, you know, stay safe out there with that limited toilet paper supply. Yeah. The good news is that more PPE and stuff like that is re- readily available for consumers now, which is yeah, nice. Yeah, it seems we, we crossed that hump. That, not the, not it, the medical ones. The, the N95s that the doctors need are still, for some reason... Wait, really? The, like, the ones with, like, the filter on the front yeah, oh, and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, those ones, the KN95s are everywhere. Yeah. But the N95s, uh-huh. they're, they're apparently... The hospitals are still like, Jesus hello? Christ. Government, please, please. Wow. What a, what a failed state we live in. Mm-hmm. Anyways, in other COVID news... Research into the virus continues. And recently, researchers from the University of Central Florida released a study looking into specific traits that might make a person a COVID super spreader. Now, the obvious answer would be having a bunch of virus particles in your saliva. Mm-hmm. Uh, but these researchers, they, they looked at specific physical traits that would make a COVID-infected person spread the disease more than other COVID-infected people. Uh, in other words, traits that would make a person's coughs and sneezes more likely to infect others. Uh, And the findings make some sense. Uh, For example, turns out when people with stuffed up noses sneeze, the virus droplets travel farther and at higher velocity than people who sneeze without a stuffed up nose, which makes sense. It's like 
you're squeezing the hose, so it's it's more. Oh, it shoots. The out pressure further. is uh, more focused. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the study's second finding also makes sense, but we're not sure what anyone is supposed to do with the information. Turns out, having a full set of teeth makes the virus particles travel much further compared to someone sneezing without teeth. So there you go. In fact, the study found that sneezes with a stuffed nose and a full set of teeth that they travel sixty percent farther than sneezes with a clear nose and no teeth. <laughs> The South will rise again. You can't spread it down here. <laughs> uh, as one researcher explained, quote, teeth create a narrowing effect in the jet that makes it stronger and more turbulent. They actually appear to drive transmission. So if you see someone without teeth, you can actually expect a weaker jet from the sneeze from them. <laughs> Great. Great. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very useful information. So thank you. Uh, you would think uh, with that information that Nursing homes might not be the super spreader events that they seem to be, but even old people, though they're you know they're they're self conscious. They got those fake chompers in most of the time. Now, whenever I see someone with a with a mask and they're talking, I can hear that whistle. He's like, "Take the mask down." Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're good. To go. You're good. Uh, anyways, if I get worried about a guy standing next to me sneezing uh, and how they might be a super spreader, I'll just ask them to remove their mask and see if they have teeth. You got any teeth in there? How many you got? Mm. Uh, now. Probably does, but uh, if, if I look at uh, the gaping maw and see all gums there, it'll be a relief. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on, sir. Sneeze away. I don't get it. I, Glad I shouldn't that ever out. see your mouth until there is a vaccine. Mm -hmm. If I see any of your fucking mouths while I'm out at the store, you're um, doing something wrong. I shouldn't see your mouth. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of super spreaders, the Trump administration, all of whom have teeth, as far as I can tell. They just cannot stop spreading that damn virus around. I need to check if dentures spread it further. Yeah, I don't know. That's another science experiment for the researchers down at University of Central Florida. <laughs> Go Knights. But yeah, the Trump administration, I mean, the past several months, it's just been a constant parade of uh, Trump people getting sick, getting each other sick. And now, for the second time in less than two months, Donald Trump has tested positive for coronavirus. Uh, to be clear, uh, this time it's Donald Trump Jr., a different Donald Trump, mm -hmm. the president's firstborn son, who stands his own father harder than anyone else in hopes that one day his father will stand him back. Not going to happen. Uh, and it looks like his latest attempt at getting closer to the man that he's named after is to get the same virus that his dad got. Anyway, here's how Junior announced his diagnosis. Hey guys, Don Junior here. You may have seen it by now, but uh, apparently I got the Rona. Uh, By the way, he also spent the entire night that he got it liking tweets about him getting the coronavirus. This, the man is, is like, I guess, it, it, is it gen, like hereditary to pass down like sociopathy? Uh, yeah, narcissism? Yeah. Probably. I don't know if it's hereditary. Maybe but I, It's also his upbringing. I guess. It could be nature and nurture. I yeah. don't know. But yeah, like, Junior's such a fucking weirdo. He, he's a living, breathing, like, like, if you distilled everything that sucks about Facebook into a yeah. person, it's DJ TJ. And like, I don't know what he actually does. Like, does he have a job or is he just online all day? Well, it I think, seems like he is. I think he posts so much. Technically, his job is running uh, the Trump family business. Whatever okay. that, whatever that yeah, means. Yeah, like what? <laughs> whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's strange. Meanwhile, after Rudy Giuliani's train wreck press conference this week, in which he continued to insist the election was stolen from Donald Trump while sweating hair dye or whatever all over his face and then blowing his nose into a handkerchief and then rubbing that all over his face. It's disgusting. Uh, we wondered whether Rudy might have the virus. Well, so far, no, not officially. <laughs> Uh, but Rudy's a large adult son, Andrew Giuliani, and you want to talk nepotism, folks? He works in the White House. Yeah. Uh, he has, in fact, tested positive for COVID. And, uh, uh-oh, in the days before testing positive, he may have exposed his dad and the rest of Trump's crack legal team to the Rona. But as with Trump Jr. and his dad and everyone else in this outgoing administration who gets the virus, they'll all probably be fine thanks to the fact that they have access to better health care than you and I do. No. And guess what? You and I paid for their fucking health care. Yeah. So. You're welcome. It's just a. Oh, did you see they did uh, get rid of one of the members of their legal team? Yeah. Very publicly. Yeah. And they're, not only they, she was actually. She never, was never part of it. It's like she's literally standing behind Rudy Giuliani in all these press conferences. Well, not and, only that. And they Trump, literally, ref, Trump referenced her as a member of his legal team like two weeks ago. And they're like, yeah, uh, we don't really know her. She's just sort of been, 
you know, she's just been at these press conferences, but she has nothing to do with our and legal team. Very deep cut, but the, it reminds me of the show uh, on MTV in the 90s called Remote Control, where they'd press a button and the person would just disappear. Yeah. Disappear off the set. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, speaking of the Trump legal team and their efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election, it's, of course, going not great for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only thing that you might consider a win is the fact that uh, due to the relatively thin margin of victory in Georgia, they are now officially recounting the votes there for the second time. For the second time. Georgia just recounted the votes (sighs) after finishing counting the first time because they're like, yeah, it's close. So we're going to recount and we're going to audit the election. Um... And yeah, because of the laws there, <laughs> the Trump campaign is allowed to regress another recount. So that's happening. And also uh, because of the way Georgia's recount laws work, the taxpayers in Georgia are paying for it. The Trump campaign not paying at all for it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, highly unlikely the third time to charm with this. Um, even if it magically is, Georgia's 16 electoral votes aren't enough to make Trump the winner. Oops. But I don't know. We probably still got at least another month of just increasingly unhinged press conferences and legal challenges that all fall flat on their face. The second a judge looks at them, there was a great one this week where uh, one of Trump's lawyers got um, uh, Minnesota and Michigan mixed up and they were like, see, all these counties uh, in uh, in Michigan, they they all voted, more people voted than live there. And then the p- people looked at it and they're like, uh, oh, you've got this all wrong. These counties are all in Minnesota. Did you think MI stood for uh, Minnesota? Because it's MN. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. Very also, silly. on Hannity this week, they were showing Michigan, and the Upper Peninsula was labeled as Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Let them have it. UP, <laughs> UP goes back to Canada. <laughs> yeah. That's where, uh, that's where uh, Joe Para. Yeah. Uh, or at least the character of Joe Parra lives. It's, uh, it seems very nice. Upper Peninsula. Yeah. Uh, before we get into the headlines half of this show, this episode is sponsored by Honey. These days, it feels like online shopping is the only shopping we really do. And it's the safest, let's mm-hmm. be serious. That's where Honey comes in. It's the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and then automatically tests them when you're checking out. Honey's basically your online shopping best friend. Here's how it works. You get Honey on your computer for free. In two easy clicks, then when you're checking out on one of its over 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons for that site, and if Honey finds working codes, it applies the best one to your cart. I have uh, been, you know, I try not to go to the store as much as possible, only for like groceries and stuff. So, I don't know, at least once or twice a week, I save a dollar or two off something. So it adds up over the course of the month. It really does. And Mm. uh, yeah. It's also like even products that uh, have previously sponsored us, but the codes are expired. I'm just like, I know Honey has someone's code for it. Yeah. Beep, bop, boop. Yeah, especially like money. with the end of November, you're going to see a bunch of like Black Friday stuff and you might find a code that isn't yeah. listed on their site. So it's, yeah. it's great to have for that. Anyway, Honey's found over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. Honey supports all kinds of retailers from tech and gaming sites to fashion brands to even food delivery. It's simple. If you have a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free and it works with whatever browser you use. Get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird so they know we sent you. Thank you, Honey, for supporting today's episode. This episode is also sponsored by Stitch Fix. Does looking at your current cold weather wardrobe options give you a chill? Burr. It's time to ditch that old sweater and upgrade that jacket. A Stitch Fix personal stylist can help you pick the new pieces for your collection that are timeless. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution for finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy them, then you keep your favorites, you send the rest back, it's fine. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included in your box. There's no subscription required, so try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep, and there are no hidden fees ever. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash weird for 25% off when you keep everything in that box. Stitchfix.com slash weird. I got this this shirt from Stitch Fix. Is that a schooner, sailboat? Fish? That's a fishing boat. I don't know. It's nautical. There you go. I love nautical-themed clothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving into headlines, though, starting with Vatican investigates how Pope Francis's Instagram account liked Bikini Model's picture. Yeah, this is just like... When well, Ted we found Cruz... the answer. He liked it. <laughs> he liked that big butt. I don't think the Pope 
uses his own social media. I like Ted Cruz. He might de- be addicted to it. Ted Cruz definitely liked that porn on 911. Yes, he definitely Because Ted Cruz isn't like 100 years old. The Pope is very old and like, I don't know. I I feel like all of his tweets are probably curated by some horny assistant. No, he has multiple assistants that have uh, the Instagram blown up on a giant screen and they scroll it for him and he goes, no, like that one. Yes. The one with the butt. Don't just tap that one. You give it a double tap. (laughs) You let (laughs) them know. Well, he's our, uh, is is this one? This one's from Argentina. This is from Argentina. Yeah. It's your big round butt. She had a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it was it was a sexy picture. Let's be yeah, honest. I mean that is, she was pulling a wagon. It's you know look, even if it was the Pope, it's just a relief that this woman was um, of age. Yeah. and uh, a woman, not a man. Like it's just it's just nice that uh, nice to see some Catholic priests doing some old school heterosexual, uh, you know, of age, perfectly legal horn doggy. Disclaimer. Nothing wrong with being gay, but the Catholic Church is the one that's against it. And yeah. if they're hypocritical about it, it's kind of fucked up. But it's even more fucked up when they're hypocritical about it and they do it against children. Yeah, that's right. So having the the Catholic priests and potentially the Pope liking a big butt uh, bikini model that's of age and female. Yeah. Look, good for them. Yeah. He likes big butts and he cannot lie because lying is a sin. So, uh... <laughs> I cannot take the like away. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I do like it. <laughs> that, that would be disingenuous. You're saying that I should say I dislike the butt, but I, I, I like the butt. I like the butt. I would love to use it as a pillow. <laughs> oh. uh, next headline. This is so good. Biker with meth falls during race, accidentally shoots himself before being hit by car. <laughs> the Mr. Magoo of bike riding. <laughs> Just a Rube Goldberg of, uh, of failure. Calamity. Yes, yeah, so he was in a race with another biker. He happened to have a little bit of meth on his person, like you do. Uh, fell off his bike during the race, had the gun on him as well as the meth. He falls on the ground. Oh, the gun went off, shot himself in the leg. Oh, geez, I'm limping. This is embarrassing. I'm limping. I'm bleeding. My, my, my bike's all scraped up. And, oh, geez, here comes a car. I'm getting hit. And here comes the cops. And, yeah, I got meth on me. The oh, writers God. of Family Guy are just jotting notes watching this happen yeah. live. But, uh, yeah, you got to be pretty unlucky for that to happen. And uh, mm-hmm. that was that person's day. A real bad day. <laughs> Sir, you've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are free to go. Yeah. Um, it's Because uh, he didn't really do anything wrong aside from, I'm, I'm uh, hoping the gun was legal. The meth, obviously not legal, but it's a drug. Who cares? Get rid of it. So, you know, yeah. justice okay. served, I think. Yeah, I hope, I hope we all learned a lesson. He definitely learned a lesson, the bike. Yeah. Yeah. He was shamed. Scientists splice human genes into monkey brains to make them bigger, smarter. This is how it begins. What could go wrong? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, I mean, so they, they didn't birth. They did it in vitro or whatever. It's a fetus. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, it, the, the human gene for like brain growth, it works. The brains were growing oh. like way bigger. We used too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's a super smart age. And then they, they like terminated the, the pregnancies before giving birth. But they're like, yeah, we could have. There's, they could have done it if they were a little more unscrupulous. They were just like, well, obviously yeah. this didn't happen in America because you can't even abort a uh, ape here. I don't know if that's true. I don't know where this happened, but mm-hmm. yeah, this is basically uh, it's basically Planet of the Apes tech. It's possible. Yeah, they could do it if they wanted to. They just haven't wanted to yet. No one's no one's been a bad enough dude to, you know, give a a monkey fetus human brain genes and actually let it uh, give birth and you know learn to speak English and fire a gun. But it's going to happen. Yeah, well, and then it's like, you know, if it's got a big old brain and it's real smart and then you have to kill it, it's going to feel a lot worse. So, yeah. All right, it worked. (laughs) Get rid of it. Tread lightly, Mm -hmm. science. Tennessee mayor won't require COVID masks until Holy Spirit says so. That's just so convenient. Mm -hmm. Look, that's going to be my excuse for anything I don't want to do. It's like, well, uh, I'd, I'd love to come to your birthday party in West LA. Would really love to, but Holy Spirit, still waiting on uh, Holy Spirit's verdict on the whole thing. Listen, I'm down on my knees right now. I'm calling I'm praying. for it. Holy Spirit, please give me an answer. No signs, no give signs. Give me an answer. Should I drive the longest 15 miles in America to go to this guy's birthday in Venice Beach? Silence, silence. Still waiting. I, you know, I feel like uh, without the Holy Spirit giving the thumbs up, I'm probably going to get in like a car accident or yeah. something. Yeah. 
Feels yeah. pretty unlucky. Oh man. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's a great just get out of jail free card. For well, anything. um, the death cult known as the GOP mm-hmm. seems to be completely just barreling down the the tracks of death here. Uh, Ted Cruz posting the uh, "Come and take it" with the turkey. Do you see that? God, it's a war on Thanksgiving. Come and take it, and it's yeah. a fucking turkey. Yeah, losers. And then it was you like, can grab this turkey out of my my warm, greasy hands. I bet Ted Cruz has the driest turkey you've ever tasted. Yeah, I don't. For a guy from Texas, like it's weird that we've never seen him cook anything. I've never seen him do anything remotely manly, aside from like an attempt to look manly, which is like, you know, the episode of King of the Hill when the when the guy from like New York comes to visit Texas. Hey, Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to get a big steak. Yeah. And then everyone cheers him on and takes a slice. Yeah. That's like Ted Cruz, but he's actually he lives in Texas. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of pictures of him killing animals because that's like the Donald Trump Jr. thing. It was like, I'm, a, I'm such a tough guy. I went to Africa and like pointed a fucking high-powered rifle at an elephant. And uh, wouldn't you know it? I won. I, elephant versus Donald Jr. But there's like the, all, the, wins. all the right-wing people. It was like what, Crowder or whatever like two days ago posted something about like, nope, not this holiday. Mm-hmm. Nuh-uh, we're getting together. It's just like... yeah. A, I would say, okay, that's fine. Do whatever you want to do. And, like, if you guys get sick, whatever. But the problem is is that you spread it to other people who are actually trying to do the right thing. Yeah, it's... They don't... They they understand at this point. You have to understand. But they don't think it but, affects anyone. Yeah, they don't... Yeah. Yeah. Because all their heroes who get socialized medicine come out completely fine. Mm-hmm. A Chinese county aims to curb dog walking by threatening to kill the dog. It works. Yeah, I don't know. This is, uh, they're, they're like straight up banning dog walking, which like, I don't know what. So you're just supposed to keep the dog inside your house all day shitting and pissing? Yeah, I don't know. It, but I feel like there was a, a story somewhat recently about how China in general not that, like hates pets. Or maybe that was North Korea. Uh, North Korea, yeah. But like even China, like having dogs as pets didn't get popular until like the late 80s. It was actually banned in Beijing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the, the, the official Communist Party line about pets is still that they are uh, Western bourgeois decadence. <laughs> uh, you know, those, those dogs are taking food out of your baby's mouth, yeah. so you shouldn't have a pet. But, uh, I mean, yeah, ever s- the last couple decades, like, yeah, a lot of people in China have dogs and cats. Yeah. But uh, not... You can't walk yeah, them, though. This one... You gotta get a big litter box. Yeah. A dog. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, yeah, we will kill the dog. If you get a warning, we'll threaten to kill the dog. And if, you, if we catch you again, we will kill the dog. Got the gun. Mm-hmm. Don't test me. Yeah. A Chinese man who sold his kidney to buy iPhone now needs dialysis to survive. Ooh. And he sold his kidney to buy an iPhone 4. Ooh. Like 10 years ago. So. Probably not charging really, very well. Yeah, probably. Not all the new updates. Not the, you know. Still get, running on 3G. Losing a kidney, that's a long-term investment. And uh, yeah, iPhone four. No, you don't understand. I got cut the rope. Already downloaded. Yeah, it's great. And it's like it's you guys still playing Candy Crush. He's like, I got two kidneys. It's fine. Is that like literally just a few months after he sold his kidney? The other one started fucking up. Oof. Now he's on dialysis every day <sighs> for an iPhone four. <sighs> Sell the other one for a new iPhone I and mean, experience bliss for a, a it, little while longer. Maybe it's got Flappy Bird on it though. Yeah. Yeah. No Fortnite, though. It was too early for the Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think the iPhone 4 can still... Actually, I, the iPhone 4 could probably still run on some networks, but I know, like, the first two or three, like... It's like 3G. Yeah, but the original uh, iPhone definitely no longer even, like, works on most networks. Yeah. Because it's just so outdated. Yeah. I don't know. Well, poor guy. Next time, uh, don't sell a kidney for a mobile phone. Yeah. Wife blows thousands on vet bills after husband blames his farts on the dog. Uh, yeah, this was like this was like a from a story on Reddit, right? Yeah, this is a Reddit story, which mm-hmm. is like you know maybe they might all be lies. Yeah. Yeah, assume they are, but this uh, this woman on Reddit claimed that uh, kept smelling disgusting, just horrible farts. Husband denied it was him, blamed it on the dog. <laughs> the dog must be dying. So she kept taking the dog to the vet, and they'd like change up its diet, put it on medicine, do a bunch of tests and stuff thousands of dollars and the husband finally was just like okay so listen this is actually me this is actually my butthole the dog's yeah. fine yeah sorry 
But uh, yeah, now the guy's going to have to spend thousands of dollars on his own medical bills because if it's that bad, I mean, yeah, at least change your diet up. So that might change things. But Yeah, maybe uh, maybe you're lactose intolerant. Could be. There's a simple little but supplement. But it's still you delicious. <laughs> you, can, you just take lactase enzymes. It's very okay. easy. That's what I do. All right. Alleged porch pirate arrested after wearing exact same shirt to court from surveillance footage. I don't know what he was in court for, but it was the next day after this port. So he robs a bunch of packages from his neighborhood, gets caught on people's Nest cameras and whatever. Get those pictures go up on Facebook. The local police department sees him. The next day, this guy shows up in court for some other completely unrelated thing, wearing the exact same shirt. So it's just like, all right, well. First off, go home and take a shower. (laughs) Then come back. It's disgusting. (laughs) Wow. But thank you for being such a disgusting person, because we probably wouldn't have caught this. Have you seen this, man? Yes, that's me. Yeah. I love this shirt. That's me. (laughs) That's my favorite shirt. And that guy's shirt kicks ass. Wait, hold on a second. What did Uh, I do? Well, open and shut case. Yeah, here's an update to a previous headline. Fat, flightless parrot named Bird of the Year after a campaign tainted by voter fraud. Well, at least it got handled. Unlike yeah. our election. Yeah, that's... Uh, Still going. The, the the small spotted kiwi, they tried to cheat, didn't win. This new one is like the kakoa or something like that. It's just this big, fat, dumb parrot that can't fly. It just hopped around on the ground. They've all got to win. Like, so it's just like, all right, well, first up, uh, good job. Yeah, what does it get? Um, is it name on a plaque? cover on the magazines, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Cool. I don't know. I don't know how things work over in New Zealand. This bird of the year thing, it's they take it very seriously, apparently. Well, over there they could take it on a parade and have everyone out to wave at it because no COVID. Yeah. Yeah. That's Wouldn't true. it be nice? Sinkhole filled with glowing green liquid found in the middle of a Toronto street. <laughs> and it's green, that baby. Is, yeah, that is some straight up uh ooze. Neon green. Yeah, that is, there's probably some uh don't let any turtles get near it. Mm-mm. Turn into ninjas. Yeah. Yeah, actually apparently the reason is they had the sinkhole and they, they like to fill the sinkholes with the green dye mm-hmm. to see if the green it's comes out or something to see if it if it comes out of any other like drainages they'll know that the sinkhole is connected to mm. pipes or whatever cool but uh yeah it looked looked pretty weird when they did it well yeah, well as long as everything's okay yeah ohio senate okay's bill allowing teachers to carry guns at school without needing peace officer training you just get one at the first day of school. Like, here's your gun. Yeah. You'll figure it out. Point it at what you want to die. You've seen movies, right? Yeah. You hold hold it like this. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, if you, every couple seconds you if rack it. If the bad guy is around a corner, you just whip it. Yeah. And the bullet, it'll slow down and curve around the corner. Yeah. This is uh. And, and make sure to keep that desk locked. Mm. <laughs> you don't want the students to get a hold of it. I like those pranksters. It's extremely dark thought, but like yeah, if this dystopian. if this catches on enough, it's only a matter of time before some student does a shooting at a school using a teacher's gun. Yes, it's absolutely going to happen. It's an inevitability at the rate that this country has school shootings. Uh, Death I mean, finds a way. Yeah, I mean this year this year we've been lucky. Uh, having students like literally not in the same physical location but it, there was a, a mass shooting at a mall the other day yeah like i was like oh yeah i guess those are back america really is just settling in for mm-hmm. uh just letting the virus win like we're 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 having mass shootings again yeah all right well anyway best of luck to them yeah last headline massive 14 hour line forms as colorado gets first in and out burger joints the, i it's, mean guys i mean it's it's a it's a good it's burger. It's a good burger, but like... It's not 14 hours worth. No. You could have just slept for the day and gone the next day. There was videos of the line. It was on the highway. Like, it's just fucking insane. Like, I get it. We're all bored. Yeah. But like... 14 hours. In and out. Christ. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of debate about in and out. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, it's overrated. You're an in and out stand. And other people are like obsessed with it to the point where it's like... Cringy? Yeah. Calm down. I mean, it's a good burger. The fries, I, the fries could you. I actually, work. I actually like the fries. I'm in the. If I know you put I'm, some salt on them. I'm better. very much in the minority with the fries because, like, they're fresh. Yeah, they're fresh and they're kind of gooey. Like they're not uh, getting them. They're not as crunchy. Yeah, I, I sometimes do that, but I, I like. They taste like potatoes. Like, yes, and I like potatoes. They, they literally shred yeah. them in front of you. Yeah, it's very fresh. Good. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I understand why a lot of people don't like them, but I like them. And also, it's fine. a perfect sized burger. It is. It, it's not one of these big ones. And their prices are really, really good. You can get in and out like, of there for, for $8. Yeah, you compare the prices in and out to like Five Guys or like Shake Shack. Or, like you, it costs like half as much money to get a decent meal in and out. And the menu is so simple. Yeah. You and can't screw it up. there's a secret menu for all the, the real heads out there. <laughs> but mostly it's a very simple menu. I don't know. in and outs great. 14 hours. Fuck that. No. no. You could probably drive to no. the next closest in and out yeah. and get it and come back. You could cross state lines mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, get it faster. Like, this is stupid. Anyone well, who waited 14 hours for in and out is Just a take idiot. a sleeping pill, and then when you wake up, go to in and out There's going to be less of a line. Yeah. A anyway. Of, like, half these people are probably, like, task rabbit. <laughs> Don't go sit in line for me. I get paid by the minute, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you see that the people in New York are doing that now? Task rabbit line waiters for COVID tests? Because COVID test lines are like two or three hours long in New York City. God damn. So they're paying people to wait in line and then like, okay, call me when it's like five minutes till the front. Ugh. The, te the, the lines in LA are get real long again. It's getting bleak here. Yeah. The last time I went, it took like 40 minutes total. And like now the lines are back up to three hours, something like that. Which yep. I guess is good that people are, are going. getting tested. Yeah. But it's like, fuck. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta come up to here to the valley. It's a little bit. I don't, now it might be worse. I gotta check. So, uh, I mean, I yeah. use the Dodger Stadium one where there's like 15 lanes and it's just this, it's this assembly line Plus operation. Plus, it's a beautiful venue. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, the one closest Chavez to me is the uh, uh, Hanson Dam. Hmm, beautiful. It's where they filmed the uh, the beach episode of The Office yeah. because it looked that bleak. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you look at the like behind the scenes of it, it's like we needed a place that looked really sad but was also uh -huh. a beach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where my testing site is. Mm. Anyways, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed the show. Please watch all, all of our other episodes over here. There's a new episode of uh, uh, News Dump and Tech News Day over there. But stay tuned. We'll be back for more this week. And uh, hit the subscribe button. Do all the fun things. Smash that bell. Smash the bell. Do the subscribe. Whatever it takes. Tell a friend. Go on Twitter. Everyone's Twitch. We're all going back into lockdown. So tell yeah. your friends to watch oh, our show because we, you know, look, yeah. we just burned uh, 40 minutes of your time. Yeah. Like that. You're going to want to burn through some time. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye.